Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a very warm welcome to the English School's uh, first ever virtual Open Day. Uh, I'm really sorry that you haven't been able to to join, but we'll do our best to give you an insight into the school um, and also to show you um, aspects of a typical day uh, in the life of an English School student. So the format of this evening is I'm going to talk you through um, some important aspects of school life um, look a little bit of examination results and also about pastoral care and then touch on activities. Uh, and then my colleague, uh, the senior assistant head, Ms. Ursula Pantelides, will talk about the admissions process and then we will finish uh, with two things. The first one is a, a short video um, which reflects uh, the life of English school students. And then finally, we'll take uh, questions and answers from you and that will be part of um, the Q&A session, which you can probably see on your screen right now. So it will be myself first and then Ms. Pantelides who will talk through admissions. So you'll forgive me for uh, putting on my glasses. It's, uh, um, I need a, a little bit to, to read. So as I mentioned, Ms. Pantelides um, is um, our senior assistant head member of our what's called our senior management team and these are the people who very much will will guide uh, your children over the course of the next seven years. Uh, Mr. Yorgio is the senior assistant head and he looks after amongst many other things uh, pastoral care and he is uh, a member of the pastoral care team who is also uh, supported by Miss Amory Talalas who is the assistant head who looks after years four and five from a pastoral care perspective and also uh, activities, and Miss Ellen Ignatio, who looks after all aspects of pastoral care for years one, two, and three. Uh, and then we have other senior management team colleagues, Miss Maria Russo, who looks after the uh, important aspect of uh, examinations and assessment, and Miss Bobby Gruta, who looks after uh, what keeps us uh, all here, which is uh, which is teaching and learning. So I'm very fortunate to have such a, an experienced and dedicated team and the reason why I show you their photographs and give you their names um, is primarily because you may wish to to follow up this evening's presentation with some questions and we're very happy to talk to parents and guardians prospective parents and guardians um, either in uh, person or indeed via teams or perhaps via email but really the first person that you should uh, you should go to is Miss Pantelides because she handles all aspects of the admissions process, but we're all here uh, to help you and to help you make the right choice of school. So if you choose the English school, you're choosing a school with a strong legacy, an international reputation and alumni who are leaders in a very diverse range of fields. We are very proud of our past. We're very proud of our alumni and what they've achieved, but we're also a very forward looking school. Um, we embrace change uh, and we do so to support the changing needs of our students. Uh, and that's a very important aspect to remember about the English School. It's not a static environment. Uh, every year, every month, we're constantly looking at our practice to make sure that we can give you, our future students, the best opportunity to, give, uh, to get an education which will help you um, move in the direction that you can do. As I mentioned, the English school has a very proud past and the proud past started with a gentleman called Canon Newham. And when he founded the English school, it was clear that he wanted to develop students who would work not just for themselves, but for the common good. Who would recognize the strength of community is very much greater together than the sum of our individual strengths. Our school motto non cb said school I, not for oneself, but for the school, expresses what we want for every English school student. We want them to be leaders in their field, but we also want them to be people who will change societies for the better. Now, for parents, probably more so than for students who are thinking of entering year one, naturally, you will ask the question, where do English school students go? You maybe know some of our past students, universities that they perhaps went to 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, 
Um, but things have changed and things have moved on. And um, the destinations of our students are, are here in front of you. Uh, these represent typical um, universities that the English school students will go to. Um, but I want to emphasize one very important aspect, and that is English school students, by nature of their exceptional performance, can go to any of the world's leading universities, not just universities in the UK or in the US, but universities throughout Europe and in the worldwide sense also. Um, typically, our A-level students receive over 70% A-star or A grades. And given the fact that all of our students uh, at A-level take four A-levels, three subjects that they will choose, and then they also do an A-level in Greek or in Turkish, um, we find that the average student leaves the English school with three A grades, um, at least. And very often, many of our students will achieve grades that, uh, that are simply quite astounding. And that's down to not only um, their hard work and ability, but also down to the, the excellent teaching that they receive at the English school. Now, teaching and learning, very important aspect of school life, but equally so is pastoral care. And what pastoral care is really about is to make sure in the first instance that the transition from primary to secondary school goes as smoothly as possible. And we put a lot of time into that. And what we're aiming to do is to make sure that students feel at home and they feel happy in their new school. Because a happy student is a student who will work to their potential. Uh, and that's what we do very much at the beginning of August and the start of September through a whole range of activities um, which involve bonding and involve getting to know your future classmates. But transition and pastoral care are very much at the forefront of our minds at all times. So when you come to the English school, it's based on two pillars, um, academic success and your personal development. And also behind that is the support that you will receive from the pastoral system. The world that our year one students in 2021 will enter and will leave perhaps uh, as graduates in 2028, those two worlds will be different places. Uh, you obviously will need your qualifications, but equally well, you will need skills. And the skills that you will need will be things like resilience, teamwork and communication, to mention but a few. And where do these skills come from? These skills come from what we in the English school would refer to as the something else, whether it's through sport, through music or drama or art. Uh, these are the areas in which you can gain those skills that I think you will need not only in the university, but also in the world of work. And at the English school, we take aspects of personal development very seriously. Our standards are very high. And the reason for that is we're fortunate to have students that are extremely talented uh, and devoted to the activities that they enjoy doing together. So whether it's music or drama or performing arts or indeed in the creative subjects such as the art club or art in general. Uh, and that's not just important from an activity viewpoint, but it's also important in terms of understanding and appreciating uh, the importance of the creative subjects and art to our everyday lives. So drama, art, music, these are not things that um, start when you're in year four or in year five. Our activities start very much from year one. They always have in the English school and we await your presence. Um, the drama club is already planning um, the junior play for 2021. And from day one in school, I hope that those are things that you will engage with. Other areas that you might want to become involved with include our instrumental program. The English school has a wide range of uh, instrumental ensembles, jazz band, and quartets, an orchestra, choirs, uh, so many areas that you can become involved in. And these are the opportunities that will help you grow as a person. I'm not going to mention every single club 
and society that we have in the school. But suffice to say, the English school has an unrivaled range of clubs and societies. And if there isn't one in the list that you see on your screen, and it's something that you're really interested in, um, we can respond to that. Uh, and we're very fortunate to have the facilities that allow us to offer any range of sport, any range of technology, any range of environmental club, any range of debate club, uh, creative writing. Um, it's incredible. Um, and really, as you can see from this uh, recent uh, outreach that we had um, from our astronomy club, um, it will take you to places that you wouldn't ordinarily go to. Um, so this aspect of creating um, time for your own personal growth is something that I think um, marks the English School out as a very special environment. So take up the invitation. Um, listen carefully when my colleague Ms. Pantelides speaks in a moment or two about the process of the entrance exam. And I hope that in the not too distant future, uh, we can welcome both you, boys and girls, and parents and guardians uh, to the English School to show you some of the things um, that we've spoken about. So I'll pass over now to my colleague, Ms. Pantelides, who will talk us through the application procedure. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Ursula Pantelides. I'm assistant, a senior assistant head in charge of admissions and various other aspects of the school life. Welcome to this evening's event. Um, I'd like to talk to you just a little bit about the application process for year one entry. So our applications will be open from the 22nd of February to the 16th of March inclusive. You will need to fill out an online application form from the English School website. Um, and uh, if you go to our way main Web page, you will find the link to this. Once you have printed, completed and printed the application form, it needs to be brought to the school with a copy of your child's birth certificate, two recent pass passport size photos and the application fee of 120 euros. It is possible to pay the application fee through the JCC process. And in this case, if you do so, please bring the receipt to the school when you bring in your application. I should stress that we cannot accept an application unless it's actually been brought in to school as a hard copy document. The office will be open from 8 to 1.30 each day for this purpose. So, which examinations will your child sit? If your child comes from a Greek speaking background, your child will speak, uh, sit examinations in Greek language, maths and NVR, which is a kind of intelligence test. If your child comes from an English speaking background, he or she will sit exams in English, maths and the NVR. And if your child comes from a Turkish speaking background, he or she will sit an examination in Turkish maths and the NVR. The examination will take place on Saturday the 20th of March from 8 till 12 o'clock midday at the English School. We expect the results to be ready on Monday the 22nd of March. Usually they're released at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So just to run through the important dates again. Registration for the exam will take place online between the 22nd of February to the 16th of March. However, you do need to bring in your completed online application printed out with the other documentation mentioned earlier to the school during this period and by the latest uh, 1330 on the 16th of March. The actual entrance exams will take place on the 20th of March. The results will be released on the 22nd of March and all going well, given the cover current COVID conditions, we hope to run orientation evenings on the 23rd and 24th of March, where you and your child will get a chance to visit the school and talk to our teachers. 
Um, the ministry deadline for registrations is the 9th of April. And then on the 17th of April, if your child has been offered and accepted a place, we will have a one hour language diagnostic test for the language that he or she didn't sit the exam in. So for example, Greek speakers will sit an examination in English, uh, English speakers will sit an examination in Greek, and these exams are simply to judge the level for timetabling purposes in the coming year. So thank you for that. Now we will follow with uh, a special video, which we hope you enjoy on our open day, and then there will be a Q&A session. Thank you. What I really appreciate is the strong sense of community and the fact that you always feel supportive. The teachers here are always supportive and are willing to stay after school to answer our questions. It's not just about classes, it's about sports, music, connections, communication, friendship. Join the drama club, change the way we see the world. At the English school, sports is a tradition. Join us. Opportunities where you can grow as a person and come outside your comfort zone. I love how the school provides a friendly environment for its students while having excellent good communication with the teachers. What I love about the English school is that I make lots of friends that I know I'm gonna have for my life. Here at the English school, music is everywhere. Come, sing and play. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much boys and girls for uh, for joining us for that uh, short introduction uh, to the English school. I hope you enjoyed the, the video, which was to show you, uh, give you a flavour of the day in the life of an English school student. So we're very happy now if there are any questions that anyone would like to ask through the uh, Q&A button that you'll see on your screen. Um, and if you'd like to ask any questions, we're always quite happy to do so. Um, and then what we tend to do as well is we'll publish the questions so that everyone can see them. Um, as you appreciate, 
Um, we try to keep the, the presentation tonight quite short because um, it's, it's difficult with a, an online medium always to make sure that the, the message can come through. We didn't mention anything about our uh, inspection that we had uh, almost a year ago, um, but the, the inspection report, which was outstanding uh, across the board, that's available on the on the school website uh, should you wish to, to see it. Um, so um, if there are any questions that you'd like to ask, whether the questions are of a, an academic or a, a pastoral nature, um, we're very happy to, to take those questions from you. Um, I, I don't think that we'll have uh, an event uh, in January, so we normally have a, another event mainly for parents and guardians in January where we um, try to talk a little bit more about the, the entrance exam, but it's unlikely that that will take place this year. And the first event um, that we'll have will be um, the orientation evening, uh, which you have seen uh, already. So first question, um, which we will publish in a second or two, um, is a very, very useful question, actually, because it asks uh, what languages um, do we offer at, at O level, uh, GCSE level and at A level? So you'll see that on your screen now and my, my colleague, Ms. Pantelides, will, will answer that question for us. Good evening. Um, well, of course, it's compulsory for all our students at the school to do an IGCSE, the old O level in English language. And also it's compulsory for them to do an O level, an old O level in IGCSE or a GCSE in modern Greek or Turkish. Then we have optional at the present uh, a number of languages, uh, modern languages. We have French, Spanish and German. But by the time your child gets into the end of year three, it may be that we also have other modern languages available, such as Russian or even Mandarin Chinese, because we have a number of students who are very interested in this subject. I hope that helps. OK, next question from Panos. Thank you, Panos, for, for this one. This is the uh, probably the, 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 the most pertinent question for, for prospective parents and students. And Panos asks, will the entrance exams be virtual uh, or in person? So as you're aware, last year uh, we had the exams uh, a little bit later in May time um, because we were very keen for the exams to take place uh, at the school. And the reason for that, as you all are aware, is that this process normally takes two years of preparation. So we will try very much to avoid the process being in any way virtual. We will try um, that we stick initially to the dates that uh, you have seen uh, earlier. And um, we have no, uh, no desire whatsoever to have a virtual process. We think it's much fairer for students to come into the school. Uh, and we have a very big campus and we can uh, accommodate uh, a very large number of students uh, across the campus and maintain social distancing uh, rules. So that's something that we will endeavour to do, Panos. So thank you for that question. Yes, and in fact, if you know what happened last year, we were planning to do them in March. And in the end, we did them face to face in May with all the procedures that Mr. Lambon has outlined. So we really hope that they'll take place on the 20th as planned. But if necessary, we will delay them until we can um, deliver the exams in the appropriate safe conditions. OK, next question deals with um, musical instruments and about uh, scholarships. And that, that's again a, a very, very important aspect of, of life at the English school. There are so many uh, added areas which I, I often think schools don't um, communicate as well as we would like to because we often focus on, on other aspects. Um, the music scholarship, the music instrumentation program, uh, the instrumental program that we offer is very, very comprehensive and there are uh, a range of support mechanisms both from a financial viewpoint and also uh, well after the school day has finished. Um, and uh, w w that's something that you can uh, you can talk to the music department about if you uh, drop a quick email to the music department. They can give you the full details of that. But it's a it's a it's a hugely important aspect for us because uh, our school um, has a, a tremendous uh, strength 
uh, in music for many years and we really want to see that continue and we want to encourage students very much to uh, to, to follow that interest uh, that they have and which may well uh, flourish into a future career. There was another question as well um, about entry into uh, year three uh, and I'll let Ms. Pantelidis uh, respond to that question. Thank you. Well, there's a different process for entry into years two, three, four or six. These are called mid program entries and we accept entries for the examinations in May. So we will advertise in late April, May for the registration period. Then we do the examinations for these entries for years two, three, four or six, usually on the last Friday in May and the first Saturday in June. Um, more de details about this are available on our website or you're very welcome to contact us at the school for us to give you more information. We do though have past papers for years two, three and four in English and maths available on our admissions pages on the website. Okay, next question uh, deals with uh, how students are supportive uh, are supported by teachers out of ours and this is a this is a very wide um, basis of support and it comes uh, in a number of forms both through um, the extracurricular offer that we have because extracurricular at the English school also includes things like mathematics olympiads um, where we really do stretch and challenge the, the students who have a, a very strong mathematical ability. And uh, we also do things like creative writing in a range of languages as well. Um, the academic support very often is linked to um, our assessment procedure. So our process is really one where we try to identify uh, any specific issues that students may have and then very much target them for that element of additional support. And one of the benefits, uh, and I, in my own view, these are these are um, not uh, huge in number in terms of the, the recent aspect of COVID is the use of technology. Uh, and we do have a, a programme as well, particularly for the older students, um, that they can learn a little bit more flexibly. And what I mean by that is um, even for some of our students during the Christmas holidays, just to be give you some practical examples, we've even pre-recorded some of their experiments so that they can uh, review those and also pre-recorded some revision lessons. So as I mentioned earlier, the support program is one that responds dynamically to the needs of students, but it's something that we're we're working very hard on at the moment uh, in order to, to strengthen that, because I think that's one of the things that that uh, potentially sets the English school uh, apart is the element of individual support uh, and support at the right uh, point in time. Mm. For example, we're planning the five and seven special report after, uh, special support after Christmas, aren't we? We're, we're planning a special yeah. um, program for years five and seven, the exam classes after Christmas, um, yeah. to boost them up into uh, the Easter period, just before yeah. their external exams. So a question from Harris, which is um, just uh, what are the, Harris asked about plans for studying in the EU now that UK fees will increase. Um, again, that's a, a, a very good question, Harris, and uh, that's why Ms. Pantley just mentioned um, uh, with, with such enthusiasm the aspect around languages. Uh, so we have a very strong language department in the English school, but what we're doing this year with our students is we're really giving them all of the information so that they can see how their qualifications, not least their, their A-levels, but also the apologetarian that the English school now awards will enable them to take up a place, whether it's at a university in France or in Germany uh, or indeed in Ireland. There are many more options uh, available to students uh, than the, I suppose, the, the well-trodden route from the, the UK viewpoint. Uh, and that's something that we've been doing. So again, even on the school website, you can see some of those links and conferences that we've had with uh, educational institutions um, from Spain to Italy uh, to Ireland, and we're really very much into to opening doors um, across Europe, uh, the US and, and beyond. This next one, yeah. So um, the next one is uh, a parent is asking, considering that our children missed two months of prep lessons, 
last year due to lockdown and are currently not attending their prep lessons, is there a chance of postponing the exam? Well, um, we hope we don't postpone the exam because obviously all children um, would like to get this out of the way as soon as possible. Um, and uh, given uh, COVID uh, doesn't get worse, um, we are intending, like the other schools, to run our exams in the two week window that the Ministry of Education has assigned us. And in our case, it is the 20th of March. Right. Okay. Next one. Yep, please. So next question asks about the number of students that, that we accept into, into year one. Well, ideally what we would accept um, is uh, around uh, 150 students. Um, and so that gives us approximately six classes of, uh, of 25. And that, and that would be the an ideal scenario. Obviously, it tends to vary a little bit uh, from year to year because we have some students who are supernumerary, but that would be our um, our ideal uh, admissions aspect. OK, next one. This one, please. Yes. Um, it says to sit the English exam, the um, entry exams. Um, I think the question is about when a student who sits Greek and maths would be sitting the English exams. Basically, if a student sits Greek and maths um, at the original entry stage and is offered a place and accepts it, then they proceed to do a diagnostic ex uh, le uh, language test in English in April. And that simply is about placing the child in the right English class not for all his other lessons, just the right English class for entry into year one in order to give him or her the right support. OK, next question deals with the, the orientation day on the 23rd and 24th of March. Um, we'll just publish that one now. Uh, that event is, is more really for uh, students who have uh, had a successful outcome uh, in the examination and uh, we want really to, to finalise arrangements with them. So it's not so much for, for future reference. I mean, we, we would ordinarily, and um, all, all things uh, going as well as, as planned, uh, close vaccine, ordinarily we would have an open day every October. And um, the reason for the open day is that prospective parents and students can come and have a look. And that's what we, we tried to do with the, the video this evening. So. Um, I think it's probably best to come along to to that open day in the future. Or make an appointment to come in and see us. Absolutely. Um, uh, I'm happy to do tours with my admissions team. OK, there's a question on Brexit. Higher okay. fees and about uh, students at university. Yes, sure. Uh, so where I think this question really principally asks uh, where will students go post Brexit? And the answer to that, as, as I mentioned before, is, is a very simple one. Um, they, uh, there are a huge number of courses across Europe uh, which are available through the medium of English. And English school students have always been uh, very flexible and uh, willing to respond to, to change. And that, that will be the case. So I think what we'll see in the, in the coming years will be more students going to Ireland, going to France, going to Germany, to Spain, uh, more to the US. Um, and I think that in itself uh, is a very good thing because there are a huge number of opportunities uh, post Brexit uh, across Europe. And uh, that's why we are currently also looking at um, provision for languages so that students can have their academic interests at the same time as uh, a language ability to make sure that they can thrive uh, in perhaps a country where they will need uh, languages in addition to English. OK, there's a question from Dimitra. So two, two questions, I think, on the uh, apolitarian. Maybe we'll... Uh, yes, there are yeah. two. Do you provide an apolitarian? So, Mr. Pavlidio. OK, yes, we do. Um, from this year, our apolitarian won't be just an English school apolitarian. We have always provided an English school apolitarian on request for universities that need it. This year, we'll have an apolitarian which is stamped by the Ministry of Education. It will be produced in June 
And students may use this exam as a pending qualification in applying to university. Obviously, it depends on which university they're applying to, which country, but yes, they will be able to use it and it has exactly the same weight and um, standard and value as the Bolidirion in the state schools and in other private institutions here in Cyprus. Okay, and the next question uh, is about the, the English results, so it could equally well apply to um, mathematics or NVR and the question is if, if the English result is low, um, does that mean that a, a place may not be awarded? So maybe Ms. Pantledes, you might want to mention. Um, well, we, we rank all students based on their achievement in the three key exams. So in their maths, their English, Greek or Turkish and in their NVR, the non-verbal reasoning intelligence test. So it depends on how low the English or the Greek or the Turkish is. Um, it's impossible for us to tell without having ranked the whole cohort. But because it's a sum of the three, the three va values that the children achieve. So um, generally speaking, of course, the better, the higher they can achieve in each subject, much better. But it's impossible to make conclusions or give you certain guidelines at this stage because it's a, a sum of the three separate um, achievements. OK, so the next question we'll take is about um, SAT examinations and uh, and TEFL. And um, this question, um, I think, comes about because, as you'll all be aware, from the university entrance perspective, there are a wide range of additional tests that students have to take. And I'm, I'm not going to go into all of those, but the simple answer is yes, we do offer uh, a range of programmes. So whether it's uh, SAT support or for students who want to prepare for law with LNAT or students who want to apply for uh, high tariff universities uh, with some of the mathematical um, examinations uh, or indeed they want to apply for medicine with um, UK CAT tests or with uh, other aspects around that area. We do provide in-house uh, courses. Occasionally they will be by external providers but we provide them at school and that responds to individual student need. Okay, financial aid. Yes, financial aid in, is, a, is a very good question. We have a, a bursary scheme uh, which is means tested and uh, annually we do award uh, quite a considerable number of bursaries and that's something again that we would uh, look to expand in the coming years. Um, and if you would like any information regarding that, if you uh, give a call to the school and ask to speak to the um, the, uh, the financial officer, the finance department, they can answer your query and how we can support your application uh, for the bursary scheme. But those are very welcome and uh, we um, we would be keen uh, in the future, as I mentioned, to, to expand that scheme. OK, there's a question here about how many candidates take the entrance exam and what the success rate is. Um, this depends very much from year to year and obviously the number of applicants, but on a very rough scale, it's approximately two applicants to one place. But it goes up and down depending on the year and the language group. OK, next question again is about the is a popular subject is about the apolitarian and asking, is it recognised by universities that don't accept uh, uh, GCSEs or, or, or A levels? Well, again, that's a it's a very complicated question because there are so many universities uh, and perhaps you can find that information if you look at the, the entry requirements. But what, what we're finding at the moment is that universities quite like a combination. They like uh, the apolitarian, but they also like A levels with it. So a, a typical offer at the moment for our students is is made on basis of both. But if you look into the detail of some university prospectuses, you will see um, it's a very positive picture in terms of the apolitarian. And uh, I, I would just advise you to look, say, for example, at uh, University College Dublin, UCD. And if you go on to the page for Cypriot students, uh, there's some very, some very reassuring detail 
there in terms of the Apollotherian. And the Apollotherian English School is very much based on student achievement. Uh, a couple of questions which I really like. So uh, Nicole and uh, Christos and Evelina, we, we really like your questions. And Nicole asks, can we join more than one club? Uh, that's the sort of question I like, Nicole. Uh, absolutely. Um, clubs and societies are so important because um, although as a maths teacher, um, I, I don't think any past student has ever come back to me and said how they enjoyed Pythagoras, but I think they enjoyed maybe some of the ski trips we had or some of the uh, the, the runs and uh, other expeditions that we would have had. So clubs are so important. Again, Nicole, you've got to balance everything. And uh, that's why it's so important that you, you at the English school, you learn those skills of time management. But um, multiple clubs are, are good, uh, but maybe one a day is a good thing. Um, and to maybe try something new, I always say it to, to new students, I think they, the most important word is yes, give it a go. And uh, maybe you'll find something. It could be photography, it could be drama, it could be robotics. Uh, uh, you might find that uh, debating or something like that that you've never done before is, uh, or the radio club is an area that uh, you will flourish in future. House system? Please. Okay. Um, somebody's asking about the house system and what are the benefits? Well, at this school, we have four houses which are named after famous um, British leaders. Let me put it like that. Um, historical figures. And we have a very healthy sports um, program involving four houses in the afternoons. And your child will be involved in an extensive afternoon games program um, with these four houses in the afternoons. It is a great deal of benefit because children socialize outside their immediate form group and also outside their immediate year group. Because for example, years one to three do these sports together one afternoon of the week, the girls and boys on separate days. Lots of benefits there. Um, school trips, yes, we like that. <laughs> Um, fortunately, recently we haven't been doing many school trips, but normally we would do a great deal of uh, excursion work. Um, we have Erasmus programme, a very healthy Erasmus programme, school um, transfers between countries, inviting people here, going overseas. We have language trips, a maths trip, geography trip. Uh, we have a lot of geography trips inside Cyprus for lower school geography. We have history trips. Um, inside and outside, literature trips, science trips, um, many, many opportunities. It's just at the moment this year, because of COVID, we've had to curtail this, but we definitely will resume as soon as it's safe to do so. Okay, uh, how many students are there in a class? Well, again, that depends a, a little bit from, from class to class and subject to subject. Generally speaking, in years uh, one to three, class size is somewhere around the 24, 25 mark. It might be one or two more just in terms of class combinations. When the students go into years four and five, it tends to decrease a little bit, particularly in uh, subjects like English and maths to around the 24 mark. And as the students then journey more towards A level, class sizes at that stage can be can be quite small. They can be sevens, eights, nines, tens, 15, 18. It depends a little bit just uh, in terms of subject combinations, because one of the unique things about the English school is you can combine any subject uh, choice range. Mm. So in other schools, you maybe just have to choose one subject from an option block. In the English school, you can do French, German, Spanish and um, mathematics, or you can do French, German, Spanish and uh, let's say uh, English literature at A level. There is no subject combination which students are prevented from taking, but sometimes that can mean class sizes of a particular in a particular block, maybe um, one or two more than the numbers I've mentioned. But in general, we have a very fine balance and we try to make sure that students get the personal care uh, that they, they, they need and deserve and that they will uh, be able to thrive. Thank you. There's one more on the Bolidiria and then um, because it seems to be very important, perhaps you could just emphasize this one. Sure. Is now, this question asks, is the Bolidiria considered to be offered as an option to students alongside the A-level? So that, that's a very good question. And because there have been so many questions on the Bolidiria, 
if if you don't mind, um, what we'll do uh, on Monday as well is we'll 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 give you a copy on the website, which you might want to look at, of frequently asked questions. But in essence, for English school students, the apolitarian is an additional qualification which they will get automatically, um, and they will do extremely well in it. And the reason for that is because the English school students uh, have a very strong academic ability. And we've carried out a modeling exercise of their scores and we have looked back at it very scientifically. So it comes automatically uh, and it's something that will be of great benefit to them. And uh, as I mentioned, particularly one or two websites, look at those and you will see. Here's one for you, Mr. Lambo, this one about the triathlon. OK, good question. <laughs> uh, are there any opportunities to do triathlon at your school? Uh, and the answer to that has to be yes. Uh, we, we have a, a, a unique environment uh, at the English school. Uh, we have a, a, a running track, uh, which is good for every sport. Uh, in the coming weeks, we're going to have new uh, futsal pitches. Uh, we also have a, a, a larger running cross country area around the school, which is exactly um, two kilometers. Uh, very good to time yourself over. It's a little bit rough, but it's it's really challenging. Uh, we have a, a gym with a dedicated gym instructor. So if you're a, a future triathlete, uh, please come. Uh, um, it's a, a sport that uh, well, one of many sports that I have a, have a strong personal interest in. But uh, again, it's uh, from a time management and a, a resilience and dedication, uh, a great sport and a great sport for, for 12 and 13 year olds to, to build into. And here's one about the basketball team. OK, the basketball team, does a child have to, to belong to an outside academy? Under no circumstances, no. Um, we, we, we do sport at a number of levels, and uh, uh, I actually believe very much in the, uh, the Australian model, which is about participation. Don't specialise in any sport too early. Uh, keep your options open and do sport because it will make you uh, fit and well and healthy. Um, but we have a, a number of teams and uh, we have a sports hall, which I think is, uh, is second to none. And uh, basketball is a is a very popular sport with students, um, but we will help you and we'll help you improve as a player and help you get a, a, a competitive experience, uh, which will encourage you to play. We have a lot of children in national teams um as well in the school and, and students who will go on as well to get sports scholarships to the uh to the us as well okay the next one's on private lessons and um i think it's important we answer this one absolutely well private lessons are um uh, let's say a, a little bit of a um an area that every school needs to have a strong focus on and at the English School, um, I think over the last number of years, we've made a, a, a lot of improvements. I think if you came to the school uh, today, you would see a very different school than maybe um, four or five years ago. We've done a lot of work mm -hmm. in terms of our resources, in terms of our teaching and learning. And the next area that we're going to focus on very strongly is the area of support. Um, because what I feel from a parental viewpoint is schools should almost be insofar as is possible, a one stop shop. So a, ch uh, a child who comes to the English school uh, should be provided with all of the academic uh, stimulus that they require, with the support that they require and with the extracurricular activities that will help them. So I don't see the need for uh, in, uh, private lessons because very often what that creates is it creates a tension um, between school and between the demands of private lessons and that's not good uh, from a health and well-being viewpoint. And I think the support that we will offer uh, will hopefully reduce the need for that uh, to, to a minimum. Yes. So we're still getting a few questions about the apolitarian, but let me, rather than that dominate completely, we, we'll, we'll put all of the details regarding that on our school website over the coming days. This one's worth Okay, the next question asks, do students receive a school certificate with grades when they graduate? Yes, they'll receive two yes. certificates. I'll publish it. They will receive the English School um, Leaving Certificate, which will have all their um, external examination grades listed, IGCSEs, GCEs and A-levels. 
and then they will receive a separate document with the Bolidirium grade, which is based on year seven performance. So they will receive two documents. Okay, next question, uh, a very good one. Um, and I, I always think a popular one uh, about class size. So would you consider lowering the maximum number of students in each class? Well, I, I understand that actually, because ma many people feel, um, you know, if you're in a class of size, 12 or 13 or 14, maybe when you're in year one or two, that that would be a good thing. But to be frank with you, um, a class size of 24 or 25 is, is actually pretty optimal. Uh, and the reason for that is because um, when I look at the results of the students in the entrance exam, the English school entrance exam is a very successful exam in that it highlights students with a very strong academic ability. So when we choose and select the students and they come to the English school, they're very able and they're very capable. And that means two things. It means they're able to take uh, on board knowledge quickly from their teachers, but they're also able to learn from each other. So when we get a class of 24 or 25, ideas will come not just from the teacher, but also from the student. And through the support that we have in school, it ensures that everyone makes progress and it's a very healthy uh, environment for students to to operate in and I don't think that we would to be very frank and honest with you uh, we don't see that as a as an issue for us at the moment uh, the areas that we want to focus on a little bit more are just to link uh, support a little bit more clearly uh, to how students perform okay there was one about the University of Cyprus okay so um, prospects about entering the University of Cyprus okay well um, Again, uh, you can probably detect by my accent that uh, I, I, um, I, I, I'm not from Cyprus, but we, we would like to link uh, much closer with the University of Cyprus. And in fact, one of my uh, New Year's resolutions is to begin the process of linking uh, some of the subjects that we have at school more clearly uh, to some of the excellent academic programs at the University of Cyprus and maybe help us to tailor some of our uh, development areas, um, for example, in IT and science, to make sure that we have uh, a good input from university and perhaps links uh, to industry. The, the aspect of English school students going to the University of Cyprus is a little bit more complicated. At this moment in time, it, it, it only seems to function if they have a, an existing offer from a UK university, which uh, either they reject or it's not successful. Um, but maybe that's something perhaps that that parents and guardians might want to, to look at a little bit more um, and perhaps lobby um, because um, it's, it strikes me as a, as a little bit of a surprise that students can apply to a, a university in Germany with an apolitarian, but it's a little bit difficult uh, locally. But that's something that we're, we're very happy to work on and uh, um, uh, I hope we can see some progress. Mm, it would be great pleasure for our students to be able to enter the University of Cyprus. Um, and we have many, many deserving candidates. Um, the next one's about students who are gifted and talented. Um, does the school have a system in place to identify students who are advanced in certain subjects with a view of facilitating them to take IPCSEs and A-levels a year or two earlier? Um, Mr. Lamban, I know this one's a bit more complicated, but okay. yeah. Um, a, a very good question. Um, I, I suppose the, these, the, this, this um, question depends a little bit on, on one's educational philosophy. And, and my educational philosophy is I, I prefer students to take examinations uh, at, the, at the point that the examinations are designed. And the reason for that is because school is about, yes, it's about learning and it's about making academic um, progress, but it's also a, a, a social aspect. And um, A-level exams and GCSE exams very often are, are, um, are written for children of a particular maturity. Mm -hmm. So rather than multiple examinations, what I think that we tend to do in English school is when we find uh, particularly talented children, and to be frank with you, that, that's on a daily basis, what we do is we offer a programme of, of individual stretch and challenge. Um, and there are many examples that we could talk to you about, sir, uh, in regards to that. But it really means that instead of maybe following the um, the year one curriculum at the same speed as everyone else. They will take elements of the year one curriculum, but also um, weave into that 
uh, aspects of challenge, and those challenges tend to come from things like mathematics or science Olympiads or very practical problems. Um, but uh, students, particularly in year one and year two, they, they, the aspect of community is, is very, very important because uh, it's, the, it's the foundation on which uh, future progress uh, is built. And the other thing to bear in mind is that some universities um, don't like it if students take exams early. So that's something that needs to be researched before considering such a possibility. Normally universities require students to have sat the group of IGCSEs in a particular period and A-levels in one sitting, for example. So that one's a, a tricky one. Um, somebody's asking about the total number of students at the English school. OK. Um, it's about 1120, I think. Yeah. 1120 uh, uh, approximately uh, at the moment. Yeah, but we do have students, although that sounds like quite a big number, um, the way we, we organise the school, it's actually to break that down into schools within a school. Um, so we have um, three, um, we've, we've, we've more than three, but we have three buildings that are centres for students. One that is uh, essentially houses year one and two, one that centres years, houses years three, four and five, and then another uh, building which is mainly for year six and seven. Of course, there is some movement and mingling and, and shared spaces for uh, subjects with specialist uh, classrooms, but the, the, the way the school is organised is very much to suit the needs of age and stage. And that's something, again, that we're taking another look at um, because I think it's all of our belief that um, the children, children thrive as individuals. Um, and, and that's the point, the, the other question about the, the class size. Um, as a teacher, uh, it, it doesn't matter to me if I have 20, 12 or 30 in my class. I will see each child as an individual and I will make sure that they make progress because I will I will know them and I will know their strengths and I will know the areas that they that they they perform well in or need extra help. And of course, that's backed up through the pastoral system. Absolutely. Um, and the form tutor system, which we are currently reviewing. Um, there's a very good question here about what happens if, God help us, we have COVID during the exam dates. Um, I'll publish this one. Basically, um, we have various plan B's and C's in place, and we will try very hard to make sure no child is disadvantaged in terms of taking the exam at that time. But really, we can't give any details at the present. We are also operating under the guidelines from the Ministry of Health via the Ministry of Education. So we have to wait until things develop and we have specific um, guidelines and outcomes to communicate with you. Uh, the next one we've done, okay. extra exams. Um, this one is the Abolidarian again, but they won't have to take. Yeah. There's a question, will students have to take extra exams for the Abolidarian? No. The Abolidarian grades will be weight based on work done at school. They will not have to take extra exams. OK. Um, the next one I think we can clarify. Yes, please. Yep. The next one asks about the weightings of the three exams in year one entrance. As I mentioned before, they each have the same weighting. OK, the language, the maths and the NVR, they have the same weighting between them. OK, so um, the next one is about do you have any plans to renovate the, the track and field and the football pitch in the near future? Yes, please, maybe. Um, this weekend, I think it's going to be good weather. Come, come and have a, a walk around the uh, the school grounds, and you will see the ongoing work to renovate the the football pitch. Uh, and if you come at the end of January, uh, I think you'll see something pretty special. Um, be a, a very different environment. Um, have you mentioned the tennis courts Aren't and the tennis courts? new tennis courts as well? So we have some uh, four fantastic clay tennis courts just on the left hand side as you come in through the, the main entrance and uh, those are used uh, during the school day by the students and also as part of the tennis club. OK, um, there's another one about the Abolidarian. I think this one's a very good question. 
if you give a state of Bolidirion, then why does the University of Cyprus not accept school uh, children from the English school? That is a really good question. Unfortunately, it's the same for all private school children. Um, we would love to know the answer. Um, as we said before, we believe it's our students' right to apply to the University of Cyprus, and we would be very keen to lobby wherever possible to make sure that happens. Okay, we'll just publish that question. I mean, that's a yes, very good it. one. It's I, a very I, good question. Yeah, I'll not say too much because I, 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 I might say too much on that <laughs> one. I, I, um, I, I have okay. to. I can't quite. I couldn't explain that to someone in another environment. But that's something that I, we're, we're we're going to look into in the new year. But, but we're going to go about it in a way of trying to to get very clear links. Uh, and we have some excellent contacts. And I, I I can't tell you how impressed I am with some of the. Uh, the context that we've had with the University of Cyprus and and what they have to uh, to offer, um, mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's a a little bit of a national treasure there that uh, that needs to come uh, for the way of our our students. But hopefully that that can come in. Uh, all things are possible. Um, okay, uh, the next one's about the ratio of children admitted in year one coming from public Greek elementary schools uh, versus private English elementary schools. Um, it's a pop approximately, um, how would you put it, Mr. Lambon? Well, let's publish the question. Yeah, publish give me, give me a, a time to think about it. I, I think the ratio is probably uh, around four, four to four point five to one uh, would be my uh, approximate answer to that one. Um, and, and again, um, the English school has, has, has always been a school uh, that admits students in terms of uh, academic merit, and that's uh, a core principle for us. Um, so th that's the the um, the determining factor is the is the entrance exam, and um, we we hold that very firmly uh, as a principle. And uh, um, that that's uh, the, the 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 ratio comes out more as a function of that as opposed to, to something that's in any way predetermined. OK, the next one is about um, offering economics and accounting lessons. We do offer uh, economics uh, in year four and economics and business studies in year six and seven. We don't offer accounting. OK, next question is what is the percentage of international students uh, in the school? Um, well, Again, all I would say on this one is that the English school is a, a school um, that has so many strengths. But one of those um, great strengths, which goes back a little bit to our school model, is is about unity through diversity. Uh, we have a diverse school population, and the the entrance test uh, in itself is, um, is 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 blind uh, to the origins of particular students. So students come and they, they through the entrance examination, they, they gain their place. And if they so happen to be uh, from an international background, uh, so be it, and that's, and that's super. Uh, and we, we very much welcome uh, students. And uh, that's always been a, a factor. If you look into the, the annals of the, of the English school uh, and the, for whom it was created, uh, it has always been um, of international and um, international perspective and uh, that's something that we treasure. OK, there's a question on um, discounts on the tuition fees for a second child. We offer 10% discount for uh, a second child and 50% discount for a third child. Okay. And then there's something about uh, subjects, um, optional or mandatory. OK, that um, that one again is probably best met by. Uh, it's very difficult to go into the detail of that. If you look on our website under policies, you'll find a curriculum policy, and within the curriculum policy, everything is is explained um, within regarding uh, subject choices. Um, There's a question about clubs. Okay. Um, whether we're carrying, how are we carrying up clubs with COVID? Um, with done quite a lot of work in terms of social distancing and um, we also have um, bubbles as every other school has and uh, so the, the the clubs are in bubbles 
with social distancing and those bubbles reflect year group structure. Um, but we're, we're, we're endeavouring to do as much as we can, but to, to keep everyone safe because uh, um, that's that's a, that's our number one priority this year is uh, safety and well-being. OK, the next one says, do you accept friends being put in the first class? Um, our policy is no uh, at present um, because we feel that children need a new start and often it's much easier for children to start the school without having baggage from previous schools. They will still see friends from earlier schools at playtime, in break and in clubs and activities, PE lessons um, and other environments. Um, so we don't for year one, no. And, and one of the reasons for that too is if you, if you think about it and uh, the, the English school students come from so many different schools and um, it, it wouldn't be terribly nice if there was uh, one student coming from a, a school that was far away when the, there were no friendship opportunities for that student and they entered a class and there were groups of other friendships that were that were pre-existing. So we, we we try to see it as as a, as a completely new start. That's why we, as I said in the presentation, we we take the students away for some bonding and they 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 they, they really do uh, they engage with that. Um, and it's a it's a it's a really good thing to see. And the first days actually are really enjoyable. They're not days of of tension or anxiety. Uh, they're days where the hand of friendship uh, is, is firmly embraced. OK, this is a good question. The next one. Um, are students separated into Greek, English and Turkish Cypriots in the first class and mixed up in the next year? Um, in the past, this used to be the case, but a few years ago we um, started to integrate all students from day one in year one. And to be honest, I think everyone would agree it's one of the best decisions we ever made as a school. It creates unity, identity, um, a sense of belonging from day one. So all the classes are mixed up and the children will probably stay with the same form group for the seven years they're at the school. So we found this very successful. Um, the only place where they might have a different group is in Greek or Turkish or in English in year one where we do have a slightly different um, English programme for children who are native speakers and non-native speakers. OK, we'll just do another two, two or three questions because uh, I appreciate that it's 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 a it's a it's a Friday evening for you and uh, um, a couple of nice questions there from Evelina. You, Evelina, you've you've done very well tonight. That's the, the second one that you've asked and you've asked about um, will you study foreign languages and the answer that's yes. And you currently you get a choice at the end of year one. In year one, we tend to focus on a number of things, and one of those aspects is uh, is making sure that everyone's English is is uh, is at a good standard. So it's it's at the end of year one you make a language choice, and you choose uh, freely between French, German, and Spanish. And uh, that's a very exciting choice actually for you because it means by the time you 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 get to uh, at the end of year three. Uh, you, you've got a good linguistic base across a, a wide range of languages and that's a very important thing. OK, the next one is on a very important one on student well-being. How is support offered to students who suffer stress? And that's a big one for us, isn't it? We're very concerned about this. Yes, and, and, and that's why the, the pastoral system uh, really is, is such an important aspect. And one of the things that we're looking at is um, potentially breaking that pastoral system into into smaller groups again, um, and uh, that's that that the reason for that is um, students do best when people can monitor their their progress uh, very closely. Uh, we have a school counsellor in school. Um, we um, have a very have a very caring team uh, in the pastoral side of school and also through through classroom teachers, and um, and we, we we work very closely with parents. And when problems do occur, um, we would ask that you would um, be uh, the first to inform us of those problems, and then we work on uh, we work on those issues. We work with the, with you uh, as the parents and guardians. We also have the PSHC program, the Personal Social Health and Citizenship Education program, where children do a lot of work on things like mental well-being, 
um, anti-discrimination, and all these all these aspects, stress uh, related to their daily lives. Um, uh, there's a few questions about the ECDL computer um, exams. Yeah. We don't at present, but if we had enough interest, we we, we could do. Yeah, uh, to be to be honest, as, as we sort of mentioned in the earlier uh, regarding the uh, clubs and activities, we we tend not to exclude things in the in the English school. Um, the, the, the 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 sort of current vogue or trend in the IT end of things is very much more towards programming, towards robotics. Um, ECDL, as you, as you all will appreciate, looks more at the at the core skills and there was a time when students did uh, come to school with uh, good knowledge of Excel and PowerPoint and Word. But I, I find that I think we find ourselves in recent years that that hasn't just been quite the case um, and that they maybe lack a little bit of those fundamentals. So I think that's where this question comes from. But that's something that we can look at, but perhaps more as a as a as an activity uh, as opposed to a core subject because the, the direction of travel is more in terms of the uh, the programming uh, and linking that to subjects like mathematics and also linking it to um, some pretty exciting areas which we, we do uh, with drones uh, and uh, with laser cutters and technology um, and, and that's what I think we would like to see a bit more of. Okay there's a question about can a student um, complete the English school in six years um, and basically we're a seven year program so if a student wishes to graduate from the school and have a graduation certificate, he or she needs to stay for seven years. Um, there's also a very good one about uh, career guidance and support here. Mr. Okay, Lumble. please. Yeah, so questions asking about um, the changing world of universities and uh, about preparation. Well, um, very often people like myself and Ms. Pantalides and other members of the senior management team, uh, heads of departments and individual teachers, we spend a lot of time uh, supporting students through interview preparation uh, and practice. Uh, and that's an increasing component because it's a, it's a complex world and uh, it's a changing one. But the short answer is yes. OK, um, there's a question about do you use English from day one? or do students go to full English speaking? Um, the answer is we do use English from year one, from day one, but the children are very much supported, guided and scaffolded in this process. So I know that many parents worry about this, but actually it's not a significant issue for most of our students. We do also offer extra English support lessons after school for the first term, the autumn term for students who might need a bit more of a boost in English. But our courses are specially designed in, in order to support language learning in all areas of the curriculum. And often teachers will break it down to make explanations, definitions easier to understand and change the pace um, of the lessons. OK, so just one or two more. Let's see if there's anything there that's uh, uh... So a couple of questions again about the Polterium, we, we'll put those on the website. Uh, fees are on the website. Uh, exam online from Evelina, uh, we're not at that point in time. Um, good question, which looks at the um, relationships between uh, students within school. Yes, actually, this is a, a very good question. And, and very often um, aspects of this uh, come from the students themselves. So. Our current uh, student leadership group is 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 looking into uh, aspects of um, how in the in the in the contemporary situation we we work to improve relationships, and we're even looking at um, some external speakers. Um, but it's a it's an area of focus that uh, that we constantly have at the school. Mm -hmm. It's very important to us. Um, Here's one about a suggestion about having year six or seven students as mentors during orientation days. Excellent suggestion. Well, well you, you, you'll see uh, a, a response to no good idea is, uh, is ever refused, so we'll adopt that one. Thank you very much. Yeah, 
um, we do try to get older students involved in all um, areas of the school in this way. It's just this school this year has been rather different in this respect due to COVID. Um, there's a question about handball. Mr. Lambon, do we have yeah. a handball team? Yes. We do. We do. We do. OK, and how are complaints handled? We actually have a process. Yes, a policy. Uh, again, we'll publish that one. On the, again, on the website, you'll see we have a, a, a very well defined complaints um, procedure and policy. And um, the, the reason for that, um, every organisation should have that nowadays. But um, as, a, as a participant in what's called the, the British schools overseas, that's why we have that inspection regime. That's a prerequisite. So a, a lot of our um, policies and procedures um, are um, based on international standards. OK, well, I know we haven't been able to ask every answer every single no. question, but I think we've answered most. OK, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for, for joining us. I really appreciate the, your time on a, on a Friday evening and uh, uh, I hope to see you, you all very much in the, in the near future. Um, we'll try to put the, the questions into groups from this evening and answer as, you know, the, the frequently um, posed questions uh, through the through the website. So I uh, wish you all a very, a very good and, uh, and safe holiday and, uh, and look forward to seeing you in the near future. Thank you very much. Good evening.